Welcome back to Student Hub Live. Well, this session is all about assessment, but before we start looking at that, let's take a look at some of the other wonderful study spaces. Thank you so much for sending them all in. We will get them th uh, through them all today. If you haven't um, already sent a picture in and would like to, please send it to studenthub at open.ac.uk. So first, uh, I'd like to show you Pauline uh, of Leicestershire's study space. Um, she says, this is my workspace, usually with the footrest stuff, which I think looks ever so cozy. Um, it's very enjoyable, well, from October anyway, she says. Remember that um, we have competitions for most innovative study space, most cozy study space, best use of a small space, and everything else. Our next uh, study space is Caroline, who um, uh, has a lovely um, uh, space in Hampshire. I purchased a laptop. The laptop folds flat away for maximum storage under the coffee table or under the bed or even in the car or cupboard. Today, as enclosed attachment um, shows, a quick hour in the living room um, while the kids are watching a movie with her headphones while she studies. That is the ultimate in multitasking. Well done, Caroline, and a, and a really fabulous space that can travel with you. And uh, last uh, for this section, I'll show you Andrea's space from Cumbria. Um, she says, uh, I thought I'd send you a piece of my workspace. Um, and uh, here's a pop-up desk squished in by the television. When the children are at school, I push the chair out of the way, blow up my exercise ball, fold up my camping table and off I go. By the time you get home, you'd never know I'd have been there. Um, and uh, she's uh, sent it as a popped up and a popped down option as well. So that is absolutely super, very innovative. Andrea thank you for sending those in so let's take a look at the thorny issue um, of assessment but before we do that HJ I know lots of people have been talking about this um, back at home so let's just have a quick um, pulse check on the population out there and uh, I know you've got lots of questions that my guests will cover but uh, how's things so we're doing really well. We've been having a bit of a chat about our study spaces and it's been great to see the ones that are there. They're looking uh, very cosy and a bit more organised than uh, my desk looks at the moment. So I'm glad that everyone can't actually see it. But uh, there's loads of groups out there and there's loads of support. A lot of people are saying that they've contacted their student support team and they've got some fantastic help and advice. And the student support team is always there. Everyone at the student support team and your tutors and other staff at the university all want to help you meet your goals and uh, help you in your study journey. So uh, never be afraid to ask. And there's always someone out there that will definitely be able to help you. But we've got lots of questions about assessment. Now, I know uh, we've got a great plan for this session to hopefully cover any, everything. So if there isn't anything that's been covered, um, we'll love to ask our guests that for you. Brilliant. Well, you keep tabs, HJ, and then what we don't cover, we will ask um, towards the end. Let me introduce you, everybody, to Klaus Dieter Rassad and Sophie Stansfield, um, who are in our assessment department at the university. Klaus Dieter is the director of the assessment program, and Sophie is a senior manager in PVC Students, um, and she manages the assessment program. So straight to the horse's mouth then. Um, Klaus Dieter, may I start with you? Um, and uh, first, ask about what assessment is at the Open University. Um, so so um, assessment is uh, never a judgment of a person, and that's really what, what often tricks us up uh, when, 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 we, when we get feedback, when we get, get a mark, and we just think, oh, I, I, did, so, I'm, I'm, I did so badly. Um, it's, a lit, um, it's not, not a judgment about your person, um, and it's very difficult not, not to fall into the trap. I, was, um, I failed my driving test twice. And I just could not not take it personal. I had to go back into classroom, and all my classmates were looking at me, and I was so embarrassed. Um, um, uh, maybe it made me a better driver. Uh, um, it, it, if if you take any assessment as an opportunity to grow and to learn, then I think you're on the right track. No, absolutely. And um, your your brother-in-law also had an interesting assessment experience. Yes. So he uh, is a retired doctor, and he. Um, um, he went back to study for a master's and when the first um, um, exam, traditional exam came up, he totally fell apart, you know, going into this room and uh, writing down uh, uh, what he had to write down. And this was a student when he trained initially, he was an elite um, uh, student. And uh, um, my question here is, uh, does assessment have to be like that? Does it have to be something where we, that, that we find scary and fall apart or could it be something just very normal what happens in everyday life and that helps us to grow and um uh, uh, sophie maybe you want to quickly share your puppy story <laughs> 
So I, I have a, a puppy and we've been going to puppy training classes weekly. Um, I train really hard with her each week and, and it is difficult sometimes when you go to that lesson and you maybe haven't achieved exactly what you wanted to and you're not quite ready to maybe move on to that, that next stage. Um, but actually having that sort of assessment is really useful. We can get feedback directly from the trainer. She can give us hints and tips, let us know what we need to do to improve for next time. Um, so it can, it can actually be a really useful opportunity for focus. Mm, absolutely, and very, very important as well, especially with a puppy. Um, so let's see what people said um, at home when we ask them, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of assessment? So let's see yikes test feedback um time to revise evaluation stress grades hard work hard panic um essay level when i uh, will i fail deadlines oh some not very nice words here tutors exams feedback um distinction so pressure can i do it gosh klaus dita what do, what do you make of this then <laughs> well, well. I'd like to uh, just uh, maybe the yikes is a positive one. Ooh, I'm looking really looking forward to uh, um, um, showing uh, uh, my tutor what I know and and you know mm -hmm. get that feedback on, on what I don't know. I think um, I think what's important is and I, I get that from those words when people when people think about assessment, often this exam and the writing in a hall comes to mind, stuff that you did at school, when really it's something that happens every day and it happened you know, for, for Sophie with her puppy. Um, in fact, if, uh, at the OU, uh, uh, traditional exams are uh, um, uh, only about a third of the final assessed task are traditional exams and the rest are pieces where you work at home and deliver something and uh, you decide when, when you hand it in within the, uh, the deadline. Brilliant. Now we've got some principles of assessment that um, are quite useful to show people as well. Um, and there are lots of different principles. There are seven of these. And at the Open University, we, we like all of these sorts of things. But I wonder if you can sort of guide us through um, the, the impact of some of those principles, Klaus Dieter, um, in terms of, you know, developing independent learners and the assessment strategy, etc. Have you have you got them to to show? Sorry, I'm not sure if we've got the yeah, slide. Here, yes, we here we go. There, there we are. As if by so, magic. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I love that magic. If you think about here, developing independent learners, um, that, that's really, um, in terms of assessment, um, that really focuses on the feedback element. We want to, okay, give you um, a honest feedback on where you are, but it's up to you to then use that feedback and work on yourself and uh, um, uh, try to improve that way. And, and of course, it's possible. You know, people people start at when they're with a, they, they end up getting degrees and they will have learned an awful lot. Um, there is um, assessment for progression in learning is, is, is something similar. Our assessment is designed to, to really pick you up where you are and help you give you an opportunity to show what you've learned, but um, also giving you a little bit of a challenge, because if you don't have a challenge, then you know it, it's very hard to rise to the occasion and really show what you've got. Um, I wanted to pick a last one here, peer review and self-assessment. Um, uh, the times uh, when I looked at forums, how um, students help each other in, in uh, dealing with assessment, you know, when you feel down and you feel like, oh, I haven't given it my best. And it's really wonderful how the community comes together and supports each other. And sometimes we also, in some of the assessments you'll find, we also designed in ways of uh, for peers to give feedback on your work. And although people fear that sometimes, it's really, really useful to get that into. Mm, absolutely. And I think what's important to, to bear in mind with that um, principles um, of assessment is that, you know, it, it's all designed there in the curriculum so that students should be able to succeed. If you do the learning, it's a way of testing whether or not you've learnt that various aspect. So it's all very much embedded in there. And the other thing um, that I, I particularly like is that feedback and feed forwards. It's often about developing and learning something so that next time you can do it ever so slightly better. Um, but there is some sense of progression there, but not perfection. In, in that sort of short term. Um, so we've, we've looked at uh, the various sort of notions of assessment. What, what, what do these look like though? What, what sorts of assessments are they? Can you guide us both through, through some of the various things that people might meet? 
Yeah, so um, there's lots of different types of assessment at the OU and they're, they're all designed in different ways to help you. Um, there's the traditional TMA, which is your tutor marked assignment. Um, and this can be anything from an essay or a creative piece of work, a report. Um, it might be a practical task or it could be a spoken task. And it might actually also be something that you do with, with jointly with other students. Um, and then we also have an ICMA, this is your interactive computer marked assignment. And some of these you'll be able to do over and over again until you get them right. And others will be linked to a score that contribute to your, to your final mark. But really you can distinguish your assessments by um, two means. Um, there's summative assignments. And these means that they um, count towards your final grade and your formative assignments. Um, these might be compulsory, but they won't count towards your final mark. But I think these are the ones that are really important to take as an opportunity to, to get back that feedback for your progression. Almost like that driving test. So all of those things don't actually count to the end goal. But if you don't do them, then you may come in for a nasty surprise towards the end. Class Dita, tell us about some of the other ones, maybe the um, computer marked assignments that are so um, common in many modules. Uh um, no, I, maybe I'll, I'll just talk about that final um, um, assess mm. task, if you don't mind, because um, yeah. that's often the one that, that exercises us the most, because I think, you know, it all comes together and uh, um, um, it's really, um, um, it's important to remember, you will have been prepared to that final assessment and it is progressive. So, so uh, you will have an ability, you know, you will have the opportunity to show um, what you've learned in the course and um, most of them, as I said, are the ones that you work on at home and you decide when you submit. And then uh, um, really in most cases, they're, they're not something to be scared of. They're something to celebrate when you, um, when you hand it in, when you get uh, any feedback on your result. And um, if it didn't work out too well and you pick yourself up, um, uh, it shows that you're resilient and that's also something to celebrate. Brilliant. Now we're nearly out of time. So I wonder if we can end on that very important point about preparation. So we've asked everyone at home how they prepare um, for their assignments. And this is what people at home had to say about that. So planning is really, really key here, but also revision, um, using old exam papers, brainstorming, um, uh, taking uh, notes, note taking, um, cards, um, a lot of coffee, always a good idea in my book, um, revise the subject, make notes. Um, so there are lots and lots of really good ideas here about preparation. Um, but preparation for assessment can, can involve more than just note taking. Sometimes there's that mindset that's important. Um, so Class Dita, what would you recommend students do to prepare for their assessments? I think there were some really, really great terms there already, the planning, the revision. Um, I think often uh, uh, things come together when, when we have that final assess task. All the bits that we've learned across uh, uh, the module or even across a qualification, suddenly you realise how much you've learned and, and it can be a great revelation when you see it all coming together. But I like that one about the coffee as well. Um, I'd like you to be kind to yourselves. Uh, it's so easy <laughs> to get worked up and it's all it's all work, no play. Um, as I said, celebrate when you can, when you've achieved something, but also um, um, just give yourself a bit of space and breathe because if, if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're not calm and relaxed, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to, to give the best that you have. And that's what we want to see from you. Now, a very um, important thing is we ask people um, whether they should look at the assessment strategy. This is, of course, the strategy for the whole module. It tells people how many things they've got to do, when they've got to do them, how much they account for the overall mark, etc. Um, whether they should look for this at the beginning of the module or at the end. Um, and 94% said at the beginning. Is that correct? I think, Sophie, you want to answer that one. Well, yeah, um, I, I would definitely be within that 94%. I'm a planner by nature and it um, definitely makes me feel better if I know what's coming ahead and I can I can plan for it accordingly. But all I can repeat is what um, Klaus Dieter has said in that plan and that there's so many different ways that you can plan that work that work best for you. But don't let that dominate everything. Make sure that you still give yourself chance to engage with all the other elements of your of your module as well.
Absolutely. And it was interesting with those widgets because we asked, should you look at them? And, and we had 94%. And then we said, do you look at them? And 91% and said that they do, which is still very, very, very good. Um, so they are very conscientious OU students, which is great. Um, so, so looking ahead gives you an idea about what to bear in mind um, uh, as, as you're working along. Um, but students get feedback um, from their tutors as, as they work through. Um, Klaus Dieter, I wonder if you'd like to sort of end in terms of uh, this, this support notion, in terms of what people can expect as they submit and get feedback from their various components of assessment. So it's really important to engage with the feedback because um, um, all our tutors uh, uh, give very, very detailed feedback against the learning outcomes that, that you will have uh, um, found in, in, in your module. Um, and um, it's worth engaging with it. It's worth, worth seeing what can I do better next time? Um, and, and I think it comes back to uh, don't take it personal. So if there's something not quite right, you just work on it. You try it the next time. Try it better. You can have a conversation with your with your tutor as well, um, and also you you know you you can discuss things with your fellow students when you when you're in a tutorial or in the forum. Um, absolutely work together so you jointly you achieve the best you can. Brilliant. Well, Sophie and Klaus Dieter, that's been a wonderful session. HJ, are people at home feeling a little bit better about things now? Oh, definitely. We're very grateful that we've had a lot of our questions answered. And if there are any other questions that we didn't cover today, because I know we've had very busy sessions, your tutor or you can email us studentherb at open.ac.uk and we'd love to help you. But as you're just starting, normally your first week, week you get a tour and an explanation of the assignments you'd be doing so it's good to uh, go through that material and then maybe ask your tutor or drop us an email and we'll be happy to help if there's anything else you'd like to know brilliant and we've also got Vic and Scott in the chat as well some of our colleagues who can answer your questions so do make sure that you keep all of your questions in there and we will do our best to answer them also right we're going to have a short break now um people were talking about campus gosh it seems like so long ago it was so long ago um but let me show you um some of the campus tours that we did um with my colleague who wrote the um history of the OU Dan Weinbren we'll be back after that uh, for our next session about social media see you soon <laughs>